This physics textbook is too physically motivated. <laughs> well, it makes sense when I put it in context, maybe? No, please? Let's move on to this. Now listen, I asked you all what you wanted to, what, what books you wanted to put on this. And some of them made it on, but others did not. Okay, and I apologize for that. I have 22 books. 22 books made it onto this list. Okay, it was nothing personal if your books did not make it. I promise. But here we go. The ultimate tier list, the, the, the one that I, it just feels dirty to make. It does, just simply because... Because it's like you're ranking your children. Bait you know what I mean? <laughs> not bait and switch. I did use some of them. MTW is not on there. MTW is more... Can I say that? MTW is more of a meme? <laughs> than an actual textbook? The only people that MTW is not a meme to are like people who are deep into general relativity. Deep into general relativity. <laughs> I hope no particle physics books. Did particle physics books end up here? No, lots of quantum field theory. No particle physics though. Um, <laughs> let's get into it. Oh man, here's the list. Oh wait, I gotta move my goofy head. That'll be good. I'll put my goofy head down here. <clears throat> if the one thing physicists have opinions on is textbook. <laughs> I know, but you're like, you're not supposed to rank them. You can say, oh, I really like this one, but then you rank it and you just, it feels, it feels wrong. It feels like it's not good. The first one we have up is the Landau and Lifshitz first book on classical mechanics. Okay, the first set is classical mechanics. I've never used Landau and Lifshitz, but I do know about, I've read some parts of it. And I have to say, I have to say that it's good. Like, I like that book too, classical. <laughs> <laughs> Such body mouth. I <laughs> I like the classical theory of fields. I like Landau and Lifshitz books. However, in the field of textbooks that are available, I don't find it as good. Not a word of Landau, not a thought of Lifshitz. <laughs> and I'll have the best problems. I feel like the problems are just very difficult. <laughs> Knowing Landau, I feel like the problems are just very difficult. I, it's not S. I want to say it's not A, too. I almost even want to say it's not B. I think for Landau and Lifshitz, I think what we're going to do, we're going to have to put Landau and Lifshitz Classical Mechanics in C. It's certainly not D tier. It's a good book. The other thing about it is it's not necessarily super, um, what's the word? Like fluent, I'd say. It's a little bit of like a, a bumpy roller coaster. Dog, if you put Taylor above that, Taylor's going in B. hey -o! Yeah. No, I really like Taylor. It's not A or S quality. I really like Taylor. John Taylor is a great writer. I just enjoy it. I think his sections on Lagrangian mechanics are fantastic. Unsubscribe. <laughs> no, listen, listen. Taylor's book. Okay, so firstly, the layout of the book is really nice because then he starts. I just think it was really nice. Maybe it was just really nice for me, okay? Because, like, it started with Newtonian mechanics and then it's just like, hey, how does Newtonian mechanics not work? Well, don't, like, let's change from an inertial frame of reference and into a rotating frame of reference. And we get this messiness. This messiness. <laughs> Koopa, all, all the people that I know who like it are over the age of 50. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> I think tier, I think NC likes uh, Alan L better than Taylor. Um, but I, I am more, I am more on board with Taylor. Now, I still don't think it's A or S tier. I would, it's always my go-to for classical mechanics because I don't know of anything better, but just because it's the best classical mechanics book does not mean it's the best book, okay? It's just not, that's not how it works. Okay, good good call, F and H C. Let's just, <laughs> I love all these books and I use all these books on a regular basis. So please, <laughs> please do not, someone wanted me to rank current physicists and I was just like I'm not gonna rank current physicists this is mostly a just a meme and just to have fun and just jokes and everything like that don't ever take this seriously as in like which book would I like you know which book do I think is better written or the physicist who I think is better or anything like that don't don't take that it's mostly just memes and fun stuff Ashcroft and Merman for solid state physics now I have two solid state physics books I have Ashcroft and Merman and I have Kittle 
I have not taken a class with with using. I've not taken a class in solid state physics. <laughs> However, I have used both books. I think I've used Ashcroft and Merman more, and uh, I actually enjoy Ashcroft and Merman um, more than Kittle. But I haven't used it. So, okay. So Ashcroft and Merman's greater than Kittle. Okay. So I'm not the only one that thinks that. <laughs> if you put it in a blender, will it be a liquid state physics? I just don't. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, Ashcroft and Merman is for grown-ups. <laughs> okay, I like Ashcroft and Merman a lot, and they taught me a lot in a short amount of time. For that reason, I'm putting them in A tier. Now, I think they're going to be lower in A tier. Is the Bible in my university? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's in, in my university, it's a go-to for a lot of condensed matter physicists. And for me, it is as well. Now, Kittle was used in a class, and the interactions I had with it were not, like, super high. Um, I, I think I might also put it in C tier, simply just because I don't know it that well. Um, I imagine if I got deep into it, actually, let's make an NA. Can we make an NA? So don't worry about it yet, okay? Don't worry. We're put NA for a reason. From what I've heard about Kittle, it should be D tier. Oh no, really? I didn't think it was that. I don't know. I I, I got information out of it, just not a lot. Um, the thermal the thermodynamics book, I think it's going to end up being in the same category. Um, but anyways, I digress. Let's move on to. Okay, let's do gravity. Here we are, Cosmo Cosmolano. This is your time to shine. Hartle. I like Hartle, but but Hartle is not going to be S tier. No. Why? Because Hartle has a place in undergraduate physics. It's fantastic. But I honestly feel like they take the road that like that like they don't want to introduce tensors too early. And I feel like a little bit disappointed with that. I felt like they could have introduced tensors at the beginning, trusting that undergraduates had the ability to handle it. Um but it's a phenomenal book, and it explains everything about gravity incredibly well. Uh, how do I put it here? There we go. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this book, and they do talk about tensors, but later on. It kind of feels like the first one is like, if you don't want to learn rigorous GR, the first half of the book is like, if you don't want to learn rigorous GR, which I think has its place, and it's a great book. It's going to be an A tier. It's a fantastic book. But I thought that they might have been a little bit underestimating undergraduates. And I looked at it in graduate school. So, why do you pick books you don't know? <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> Next up is Wald. Now, Wald has some great, great concepts in it. However, I'm not fully on board with it being S tier. But I do think that it's... His level of explanations are really high. It's a very good book, like a staple for all GR people. But no, but Wald is great for the things that I've looked at it for. I haven't looked at it super in depth, but I do like what I've seen from it. But it's A, it's A so far. I might move it to S tier in the future. We might have to do one in like two years, but we're not there yet. I'm not there yet, I'm not there yet. Weinberg, 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 Weinberg. Hmm. Weinberg, where do we... Hmm. Weinberg's S tier. Let me tell you why. Weinberg's different because he teaches it algebraically. And it's like the only book to do that. It's amazing. His book is amazing. It's a phenomenal book. And it's super in-depth. It's so rigorous. It's so rigorous. His perception is so lucid. I agree 100%. Weinberg, Weinberg's gravitational book is amazing. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. But you also have to consider Sean Carroll's book. Now, Sean Carroll's book is an S tier because, let me tell you why. I've always seen it like this. Some books have very geometric, geom geometric heavy approaches to general relativity. That's Hartle. And some GR books have a very algebraic approach to, ge ge uh, to general relativity. That's Weinberg. Both of them are good for their own thing. I am not really super geometrically minded. However, Carol does a really nice amalgamation of both. 
Like he somehow made me realize how the geometry of gravity fits in with the algebraics really nicely. Cause I can, I, I, and this is, I'm out of practice for GR and it's been a few years and I'm not the best at it. I was never the best at it to begin with, but I was never able to understand the geometry parts of GR. That's it. I just think Carol's does an excellent job bringing those two aspects of GR together. Now we're to the introductory physics books. <laughs> Let's talk about the lectures on physics from Feynman. Ahem. Here we go. Huh. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna put it last place in C tier. <laughs> Why? Why the last place in C tier? Because it's it's okay. <laughs> but it ain't D, you coward. <laughs> Okay, listen, it's not good. It's not good for learning things. It's good for, it's good for understanding things. It's not good for learning. There's just, it's not good for learning. Yeah, let's do it. Let's put it in D tier. It's not good for learning. It's like, this is a textbook. This is a textbook tier list. I don't know how people think this is a textbook. It's kind of fun to read some of it. Good intuition for understanding things, sure. But it's not good for learning. Let's be real. You monster. <laughs> it is an entertaining, it is entertaining to read. I'll give it that. But it's just too anecdotal to learn from. It's like, here's, here's an equivalent. Here's a, no, not an equivalent. It's not an equivalent at all. I'm sorry I said that, but Z, okay? Z's book are good for using your knowledge, but they're not good for learning knowledge. Um, and ultimately Z's books would still be higher than the Feynman lectures because <laughs> Anthony Z is a fantastic writer. I wouldn't recommend Z for learning anything because Z is too anecdotal. It's too much like uh, the, ph the phenomenon is f in the front. So if you're a particle physics, physicist studying particle physics, you have a good understanding of the background, Z is a great book. Um, but yeah, it's not something that I would be like, first book on particle physics, I probably wouldn't recommend Z. Um, Okay, so now I used this book, this next book, which is Halliday and Resnick, Introductory Physics. I used that when I lectured over the summer. They do a few things I don't like. I'm following Physics 08. <laughs> uh, Eric, do you think starting in particle physics gave you the algebra first approach that ob uh, obfuscated the geometry approach to GR? Uh, I had the problem with particle physics. I was the, I, no, I've always had that problem. I don't know why. I have a lot of problem, a lot of problems um, visualizing how um, like algebra can be rewritten into a ge uh, geometric form. Um, I guess what's the good uh, good um, explanation? How, how do I uh, reword that? Um, I don't have a, a good sense of looking through an equation into some like a deeper connection. I'm quite good at manipulating equations. I don't have an idea of pulling concepts out of equations. And I think in order to do geometry, you have to be able to pull concepts out of equations. Now, if you give me an equation and you say, I want this to look like something else, I do that all day. I'm quite good at that. But if you say, you give me an equation and say like, I want to know what that means physically, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, I am not great at that. Um, and I think that's why you I wanted to go to a, theor a theorist. Too. Yeah. I'm quite good at manipulating your feelings too. <laughs> oh no. Halliday and Resnick's is algebra-based. No, no, it's calc-based. They're both calc-based. Both Halliday and Resnick and Knight, which we're going to do next, are calc-based. Um, but no, I felt like it was good, but I thought that they taught things out of order in some ways, and I thought that that was a, an intuition killer. Like, it would actually hurt someone's intuition at understanding something. The one thing was Gauss's Law. They taught Gauss's Law before Flux. And I had a big issue with that, because I think... Flux is necessary in understanding Gauss's law. Like, I really do. I think if you want to learn Gauss's law, you have to understand flux. I don't think you can learn Gauss's law and then use that to learn how flux works. And then we're talking about flux of an electric field through an object, right? It seems really interesting. It seems really opposite to me that they would do that. So for that reason and the reasons uh, like that they did that throughout several parts of the book, I'm going to give it a B. Good book. Great book. But they do that. Night, I think, is also going to be a B. Um, I think I'll put it a little bit above Halliday and Resnick for the same reasons. Now, introductory physics books are hard to write, which is another reason why they don't instantly go to like C or D. But like introductory physics books are hard to write. You have to eventually pick a path to teach things in. 
I just feel like the path that they both picked would not be the path that I like to teach from. Uh, it doesn't match up in my intuition. And when I teach, I have to teach based off of my own intuitions. At least you can read the equations. <laughs> okay, we get to Griffiths. Griffiths E&M. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. This is where I start to make enemies. <laughs> Ready's the pitchforks. Griffiths is gonna be in the last place of A, I think. Griffiths more like C. Okay, so maybe you guys are a little bit more savage with me <clears throat> than I am. Here's the problem with Griffiths. They have an excellent book. They have a, David Griffiths writes excellent books, period. He writes excellent books. This book is far too physically motivated. Richard Feynman said, if you can't explain it simply, you do not know the topic. Sure, well, he does explain it simply, but I think it's too physically motivated. I felt like a lot of the things in the book are not physically motivated. Like a lot of them are mathematically motivated. Now they all follow phenomenon. That's true. They all follow phenomenon. That's, and it's a great point that they follow the phenomenon. And you just chose to teach everything from that phenomenon. And then it kind of muddies the math a little bit if you're not careful. And I felt like he muddied the math a bit with, with, uh, with some of his um, examples. Uh, I think maybe especially examples. Now, here's the thing about myself is like I have a terrible time picking out concepts. I already mentioned that. I have terrible, terrible time picking out concepts. So if you give me a word problem with no equations and ask me to write down the equation that solves that, I am terrible at it. Really bad problem visualizing that. And I could draw pictures. I could do all this other stuff. And it didn't work. And that was how he motivated everything. Now that I've been teaching it and studying it and doing all that other stuff, I know exactly how I would have rather learned the course. And it would have been much more strongly motivated by mathematics, I think. This physics textbook is too physically motivated. <laughs> well, it makes sense when I put it in context, maybe? No, please? Um, I want my physics so general. I can't even tell if they're a mathematician in my mirrors. <laughs> it's true, though. Like, physics is written in the language of mathematics. And when you want to write it in a different language, like a language of physics, then I don't think it makes a ton of sense um, in some cases. But people swear up and down by Griffiths. It's a great book. It really is a great book. But, but I would have rather had it been more motivated by math. <laughs> My identity crisis sometimes. <laughs> okay, next up we have Jackson. I like Jackson, but not that much. I think I like Jackson because Jackson is like a staple. Who has taken an e &M course in graduate school and hasn't used Jackson? Pure math can't be too dry for some. Jackson is what Griffiths was not. It is highly mathematically motivated. They talk about Green's functions for potentials. They talk about, uh, they have that master equation that like is so general that it encompasses like all of those things that you can study. I mean, it's just really well written. Jackson teaches general methods that a teacher could actually use. That's what I like about it, is it's incredibly general. And just starts with like, this is a Green's function, and you do all this stuff with it. And then like, it doesn't show with like, this is a potential. I think Eric has what does been that paid potential off do? For his list and not telling us. Jackson is too mathematical. No! No, it's not! Okay, Peskin and Schroeder. Peskin and Schroeder. Okay, I don't know how people are going to feel about this one. But frankly, my dears, I don't care, okay? Peskin is gonna be- Peskin and Schroeder is a great book for looking up things that I want to know very intensely and nothing else. <laughs> I think if you study, it's like MTW, okay? MTW is a meme if you're not super deep into general relativity. Peskin and Schroeder is not a meme, but it's also just not greatly useful unless you're super, super deep into learning a topic. I could learn something from Schwartz in like 15 minutes if I wanted to, okay? Schwartz is phenomenal. I can learn something from Schwartz and, okay, let's not say, okay, <laughs> let's, let's be real, it's not. <laughs> it's not 15 minutes. I can learn something from Schwartz in a day, okay? That same topic that I wanted to learn from Schwartz in a day, it would take me a week and a half to learn in Peskin and Schroeder because of the level of detail and intric intricacy and how complicated they make it. Schwartz is gonna be a high A. It might be the highest A that we have today. Hey, hey. Um, it's just such a good book. It's like Schwartz is, is the new kid on the block and it's so solid. It's just a solid book. You know what? No, it's gonna be S. It's gonna be S. It's too solid. 
it just explains everything so clearly and succinctly. You have kind of the two spectrums of book, right? You have the book by Peskin and Schroeder, which is absurdly complicated <laughs> on many levels, absurdly complicated with many of the topics. And then you have Shrednicki. And Shrednicki has kind of the opposite effect. Shrednicki is a little bit too light for me. It's a little bit too, it's a high B though. It's a little bit too just a taste. It makes my mouth salivate for more particle physics. You know, I think one of the benefits of Shrednicki is that you can learn something really quickly because he explains it very nicely and it only takes like a few pages to explain the topic. Very nice. And then like, if you only want to know one topic, you only got to read one chapter. Very cool. Shrednicki plus Z. Yeah. So that's a great combo. Cool. That's a great combo because Shrednicki gives you just a taste and enough of the math where you can understand a concept. And then Z would probably just beat it into your skull. Like, of understanding that concept over and over again, but not the best for learning the topic, but the best for understanding the topic. Um, Z is phenomenal in that way. Um, and Shrednicki is really good for just giving you a taste. But Schwartz is just so solid. You know what I mean? Um, they all have their place, obviously. That's why I use all three of these books. They have complimentary exposition for sure, yeah. This ranking, disaster. <laughs> Oh, Justin, you're mad about Peskin and Schroeder, aren't you? Why'd you even, why? I said my piece about it. Let's move on to Weinberg. Weinberg's above Peskin and Schroeder. <clears throat> I think it's, again, it has a different place. Do I, I think it's equal with Shrednicki, okay? I think it's equal. It has the ability to explain concepts extremely well, but the fact that he uses a different formalism than everybody else makes it hard. Um... It makes it hard because physicists have terrible formalisms as it is. I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger for the rest of this. It's going to be weird, I know, but do you, but bear with me. Oh yeah, so Weinberg wants to write books for all of his own classes, and I get that, but physicists have this tendency to like use really terrible notation, so then Weinberg's like, well, I'm going to use a different notation that I think will work for me, and it's like, well, we already have a terrible notation, and now we're just adding more notations to it, so like... <laughs> Where's it stop? So like none of them are really terrible, but they're all just different. And it, it's harder when you add more notations. So for that reason, it's B. Excellent concepts. Excellent concept explainer. If I want to know a concept and I don't care to know the math, I'll go to Weinberg first. Uh, and then sometimes I have to go somewhere else. <laughs> but if I want to know a concept and I don't care to know the math, then I go there. <laughs> Eric really out here ranking books low for notation okay so a b is still a fantastic ranking <clears throat> we're on a quantum mechanics and we have griffiths i do not have a lot of practice with griffiths book okay i don't have a lot of practice with griffiths book however i feel like it's too complicated i feel like it's too complicated like when i as an introductory quantum mechanics book you do not want to have that difficulty of level of notation. It's just like the notation and the way it's described, it's kind of all over the place. Now it's still a C, it's not D, it's not a D tier. In fact, I would probably even put it above Peskin and Schroeder. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but Griffiths, I have tried to work through sometimes. And I feel like it's, it's just the, the ideas are a little too muddied, a little too convoluted. Nowadays, if I wanted to work through Griffiths, I think I'd be fine. But I've taken how many quantum mechanics class and have studied quantum information theory for how long? I mean, it's not like, it's not, we're, we're, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's talk about Townsend. Phenomenal book. I love Townsend. Really, really good. Definitely A tier, but where? Where, 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 where? I think when I took Townsend, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I think when I took, okay, let me rephrase that. When I took Quantum 1, I wasn't a huge fan of it. When I took Quantum 2, I thought it was phenomenal. Let's put it in A, in the middle. In the middle. I think Wald and Hartle are still better for their purposes than, than, uh, than Townsend is, but Townsend's fantastic. 
<laughs> it's just some random BS Eric is making up. Are you ranking on pedagogy? I never caught that. <laughs> Why not? Why wouldn't we rank on pedagogy? What else are we ranking on? We're ranking on a couple things. Pedagogy and <clears throat> chat is turning on the streamer today. No, you're turning on the streamer today. So it's negative. Cool has my back. Townsend puke. Never mind. I just read that. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. <laughs> I liked Townsend. Townsend starts with the Stern Gerlach thing and goes into it like right off the bat. He's like, this is what's crazy. He's like, this is what's crazy about quantum mechanics. And then that's awesome. That's such a cool thing to learn as a fourth year. I just didn't understand how cool that was. I know, like, we're all physicists now, right? Or most of us are physicists. So we, the shock of that kind of doesn't hit so hard. But it was really cool to learn the first time. It was really cool to learn the first time. Okay, next up is Sakurai. All right, this book is just... I can't... I, I, it might be my favorite book of all time. Not only is it super well written, but like the concepts are from it for are fantastic, excuse me, and the story behind the book is amazing as well. Sakurai is the best quantum mechanics books. It might be my favorite quantum mechanics books. I just love everything about the book. I love how it's written. I love the story behind the book. I love how deep the mathematics goes. I think the the, the depth of the mathematics is perfect for understanding the concepts well like because the mathematics is not super convoluted like anybody who's worked through sakurai knows that the mathematics are not super convoluted if i want to know a complicated quantum mechanics topic i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go to in fact if i want to know anything quantum mechanically i'm gonna go to sakurai first <laughs> i might only go to townsend if i can't find the answer because sakurai is much smaller than townsend is the cover is much more stern gerlach is a fourth year third or fourth yeah uh, my, my first, my quantum mechanics, well, I, well, you know, my schedule was all crazy. I, I mean, I, I was 27 years old, so I, I was not, you know, a spring chicken in my fourth year. <laughs> Next up is, uh, Blundell and Blundell. <clears throat> I have heard wonderful, okay, let's, let's just, okay. I've heard wonderful things about Blundell and Blundell. I have, the authors, the people. I've heard wonderful, wonderful things about Blundell and Blundell. The book I did not like. I took a class with this book. I really did not like their book. Everybody has reasons why they don't like certain books. I have my reason for disliking this book. If Stephen Blundell ever offered a course, would I take it? A hundred percent. I would love to learn from Stephen Blundell. I think he's a fantastic teacher. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about him. I really did not like the book though. I just being honest, I'm just putting it out there. I just was not a fan of this book. I, what I did like about the book, and I will tell you why I think it's above Feynman. A, is because I, I just didn't like Feynman's books that much, especially not for learning anything new. Um, and B, uh, <clears throat> I thought the Blundell book was fantastic for history. I thought the, a funny name too, Blundell and Blundell. Yeah, it's a husband and wife wrote, wife wrote it. I thought the history presented in the book was phenomenal. I thought that they, they act, and that was really cool. Thermal take, boo, boo. Um, the history that they presented in the book was amazing. I, I really dig it. But if I'm speaking from like a class point of view, I don't necessarily think that that's helpful. <laughs> Cause my teacher would end up spending like 10 minutes talking about history on every topic. <laughs> and that's really cool for me. But pedagogically, right Justin? Right, Justin? Pedagogically. But no, if you're into history of physics, grab that book. Really, really good book. If you want to learn thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, I would probably send you somewhere else. Kittle's a good book. Um, you know, but I haven't used it too much. Next up, statistical mechanics. Here we go. Ready? <clears throat> I love this book. This book is fantastic. Pathrian and Beale, Chef's Kiss. So good. Now this is a mathematically motivated book, as it should be, because statistical mechanics is too hard to understand physically. <laughs> I stand by that. Statistical mechanics is too hard to understand physically. It's too complicated. You start adding all these things, all these processes and whatnot, it's too difficult. Pathrian Beale does an amazing job motivating it mathematically. 
<clears throat> it has the second best introduction to RG. What's the first best? Ken Wilson, baby. I agree. Ken Wilson, I mean, the source. Like, how can you not have anything better than the source? This is my ranking. This is it. Now, there's always, of course, there's, there's, I mean, hundreds of thousands of textbooks. These are the ones I picked because these are, are my favorite textbooks and the ones that I'm the most familiar with. Um, <clears throat> Save Shankar for Griffiths or something like that. Do you have a list with all the titles? I don't recognize all of the covers. I don't. Um, but here's the deal. Okay, you asked why I had a not available thing. <clears throat> I thought for next week, <clears throat> next week, I want to see your rankings and I'm going to roast them. You understand? I'm going to roast your rankings. Then you'll have your time. You'll have your time to justify it. I want to see your tier list. And next week, so post a picture of it into give me your tier list on the Discord. Here's the Discord. If we have enough, I'll roast them. If we don't have enough, we'll wait a week or something. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so you can add your own physics books. The way I did it was I just went on, I saved saved a, uh, the, an image that was a JPEG onto my computer, and then you just easily go and upload it to the site. It's super easy to change. So change yours. It doesn't even have to be the same physics books. Give me new ones. Give me something different. Put Feynman lectures in, in, in S slot for all I care. Set up your tier list. Take a picture. Oh, let me share the tier list. Hold on. <clears throat> and paste. Here you go. <clears throat> there it is. Have at it. 